GP, medical herbalist, um, with my team. You have a picture of some of them behind, and we're in Galway, Dr. Clare's Academy. Uh, we're on the website, Dr. Clare's Apothecary. We're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. Um, we love helping you. That's what we do in the morning when we go to work. The rest of the time, we enjoy life. Um, so, uh, but I love to teach people and tell people um, about the, um, the benefits and the actions and how they work and why they work. Um, some of you may know that I'm writing a book about how medicine, how herbal medicine has been made invisible. And because it's not in any pharmacy, because it's not all over the place, people think that, oh, well, there must be something a little bit quirky about it. I have to say that herbal medicine is the most stable, regular, orthodox, conservative, traditional, um, uh, a, a universal system of medicine. It's and, and it is that it's a system of medicine. It's not something that has uh, a one herb for this or a one herb for that. Although herbs can be useful, used individually, most of the time it's it, it, using herbal medicines means um, uh, using a blend of herbal medicines, uh, making efforts to optimize nutrition, give our bodies the building blocks that they need. Anyway, I'm talking about allergies today. Don't get me on that subject of why herbal medicine has been made invisible, but it is relevant to as to why we don't turn to herbal medicine first, especially for mild to moderate conditions. Um, allergies are one of the one of the groups of conditions that made me think twice when I was only being a GP um, about when surely there must be something better, something um, less uh, harmful, less damping down symptoms, but not really um, truly healing anything. Because as you know, with the, the eye drops and the inhalers, the minute you stop using them, then in fact, the, the problem is still there. It hasn't solved any problems. Um, I didn't really believe that herbal medicine would do anything much more than make us more comfortable, which is what I expected of the drugs. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. So 20 years later, one years later, here I am teaching you um, about using herbs for allergies. So um, the, the analogy is like your immune system on speed. Um, it's an avalanche. Think Niagara Falls. Um, it, the normal proteins and chemicals that we normally eliminate, dampen down, um, manage to not react to in any major way. They actually trigger um, immune reactions, which are designed for things like um, toxins and uh, bacteria and viruses and fungi, like serious stuff. Um, and what's happening is there's a bit of pollen in the air from the plants and we're behaving like it's a major emergency if we're subject to um, allergens. Or we eat something like egg or peanuts and it's like, oh my God, something terrible. The body is, is overreacting in a big way. So it's an overreaction. Um, and we're exposed to these proteins, chemicals or substances um, by, by touching them, by exposure to skin, by breathing them in, inhaling them, by injecting them, um, being allergic to a drug which is injected. But much more commonly, it's an insect that's injected um, uh, stuff which causes these, triggers these reactions um, because they, they actually work like a, a syringe pump um, or we swallow them um, into our digestive system. Um, one of the major... Um, mediators of this Niagara Falls of um, our immune reaction is uh, histamine. And that's a chemical which acts like a neurotransmitter. And it sends messages between cells. And it has a ripple-like action. So you, you throw in the pollen, you throw in the in insect um, uh, protein, um, you throw in a bacteria or a virus, and that's it, kaboom. You get these ripple effects. Um, because it's, these reactions spread through sheets of, um, of cells, um, like, like ripples. Um, and that's put, done partly by the neurotransmitter-like action of histamine. Uh, histamine also affects the sleep-wake cycle. So any of you who have severe allergies and you notice that it's very difficult to go to sleep, stay steadily asleep and wake up refreshed, that's because the histamine interferes with the um, sleep-wake cycle. Um, it induces the production of IgE, which usually destroys or creates a, a, a system 
whereby these allergens are destroyed before they can get deeper into the tissues. So it, 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 the immune system is, is designed for one purpose and it's like it gets hijacked. Um, and that hijacked is like a cascade, right? Um, so I'll come back to that maybe because it's like a concept of how her we use herbs to manage um, it, rather than just damping down the symptoms. Um, so we've done the goggle wrap, sunglasses, and the windows closed and the Vaseline. Um, most people grow can grow out of it, um, but it comes back in cycles throughout their life. Um, and in 25% of the industrial world, this is a problem of the industrial world. And the more the uh, relatively unindustrialized worlds get industrialized, they, the problem will spread. Um, whether it's partly to do with the uh, poor eating habits, the introduction of um, uh, foreign foods, whether it's uh, the whatever it is that's associated, the air pollution to do with, and of course, most of our production now is being exposed exported um, to the uh, less in, less industrialized countries. So they go through that whole industrial revolution, if you like, um, and they're often the dirty industries. Um, uh, it's the leasing, leading cause of chronic illness in the United States and um, for children, it, allergies affect sleep and growth. So it, they're not just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. They actually have big effects on the um, on the uh, growth, development, work-life, productivity, um, and happiness. You know, it's miserable. You know, you, people look forward to the summer, and if you're a severe hay fever sufferer, you're going, oh my God, this is going to be a nightmare of um, lotions and potions and putting things in and all the rest of it. Um, I, I'll explain this a little bit more later. Herbal medicine sees things in terms of terrain, and, uh, and a, a huge part of it terrain for every system is the digestive tract. So the herbal medicine, just planting that seed there, we're talking about terrain, we're talking about digestive tract. Following the molecular um, biological model of medicine, um, which is, is currently in vogue, um, there's an induction of IDE and IgE, and it's a TH2 um, an immune activator, um, if you like. Uh, there's very interesting information coming out or overlap um, with how the body reacts to worms and ticks. Um, and this is in an era where Lyme is in, in all of these countries like and, and spreading widely um, to do with climate change is um, ticks. And there's always a low level of, of uh, worms that um, uh, it's a bit like the thrush that you treat with the chemicals and three weeks later it's back again. Unless you change the terrain, the, the worms actually come back again. Uh, I'm talking about usually about thread worms, which are um, relatively benign. Um, to do with food processing, some things are particularly um, uh, implicated, uh, and they would be chitin, um, sulfites. If you, if you buy dried apricots, um, you want to buy the ones that are a dull, dirty looking brown, not the bright orange ones. The bright orange ones are, are um, uh, preserved with, with sulfites and uh, histamine. Histamine has more got to do with what foods are fresh, um, leftovers, um, uh, fish that's not nearly straight out of the ocean or not flash dried. Um, so you might want to look, if you've got very severe allergies, you might want to look into those and you might want to make an appointment with a nutritionist. Um, for specialist advice. We do have a, a, a leaflet on histamine. If you give us a ring, histamine foods, um, we can let you know how to access that or email it to you. The allergy system affects um, uh, COX uh, receptors, arachidonic acid pathways, prostaglandins and interleukins. So now you know that I'm very clever. You know your doctor is very clever. You know the drugs are very clever, um, but they're molecules um, and they they, if you block those theoretical um, areas that these agents block, um, the one thing that's not asked is where do the, if you, if you put up a roadblock, you'll get a, a backlog of cars and they disperse through various diversions. So where do they go? According to the laws of natural physics, they don't just disappear, they don't evaporate. So there's whole questions, um, fundamental questions about where these go. Whereas the terrain looks at how boggy, how hot, um, 
how uh, how much lymph flow there is, how much cleansing, um, and how much liver is is a, is is working very well in terms of clearing old stuff, how uh, active the digestive juices are. But it's basically how clear the stroma or the interstitial um, fluid, extracellular fluid, um, how it drains into the lymph, how it's collected, and how all of those that material is excreted in the bile and in the poo. So one very good tip is to increase the fiber in your diet and eat bitter foods. Okay, bitter foods are a dandelion leaf in your salad. Um, and uh, chicory, but we don't have that growing here, um, and uh, it's not very accessible. Um, so what other bitter herbs um, that are accessible? Our native bitters are um, bog bean and gentian, um, but don't go digging up the gentian in the burn, please. It's a protected species. Um, but uh, bitter foods, the, and the most accessible, artichoke is the other one, but not many Irish people you know, boil up the artichoke and dip it in olive oil and lemon juice. Um, I, I've never been offered it and I don't cook it myself, but that is another theoretical source of bitters. Bitters are um, important for lots of reasons. Um, they're also very good for mood stabilization. Um, so depending again, if I was to say that there's a whole spectrum, spectrum, spectrum of mild to severe, um, how much you would use a collaborative approach how these go okay how how you would if you, very severe symptoms would need a collaborative approach with all of the um stabilizing inhalers and various other things rarely steroids i hope but they might be necessary um, and how much you use they're in other words they can both be used together mild symptoms probably won't need the medication moderate symptoms might for a flare-up severe ones are likely to need both so it, this is not a one versus the other. We are so, so, so lucky um, that we have both. For all of these allergies, um, a very good thing to do to cool down because the terrain is hot and dry. I've never yet met anybody with allergies who does not have a hot, dry, um, uh, uh, um, it, it, the opposite of boggy and the opposite of... Um, uh, yeah, they, they don't get enough mucus, it's not moist enough, their they're protective um, moist surfaces are not in good shape. And overall, they have a hot, dry um, constitution. Um, so, and what's very good for all of that is aloe vera juice. So there's one of the tips. So we're building them up as we go along. Here's another one. Lots of greens, antioxidants, plus, plus, plus. Um, vegetables that are particularly useful are celery, cucumber, and courgettes. Seeds that are particularly useful are nigella seeds, um, and they're also called black seeds and uh, chia seeds um, because they're particularly rich in essential fatty acids and they're very easy to take. Um, uh, and if you want to choose a, a tea um, to have in the office or whatever, a, a good quality green tea tea bag is very helpful. I hope I'm not going too fast. Okay, here we go. So the um, we've got the terrain, and now we've got if we have a hot, dry terrain with a flooding immune system, what kind of actions might we like from herbs used as a soup? So a blend of herbs might want to be used. What, what actions might we want in a blend of herbs? Um, and this is the blend of herbs um, that I'll be describing. It's called Allerton. Now, this is the one that I've put together, um, not on my own recognizance. These are herbs that have been used, that have a logic, that sit very nicely together, make a very nice soup. It's like having, you know, do I have a, 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 a patent or a copyright on my particular version of vegetable soup? No, I don't. This is, this is, relates to, um, herbals and herbalists and my own experience um, over the, the last 21 years um, and those of my teachers um, and uh, reading books and, and, and what's available and allowable to, to be um, put forward as a, as a nutritious food supplement. Okay, so this is a nutritious food supplement. There's no medical claims. There are just actions 
on the body in the same way that if you eat cabbage, it has actions on the body. Um, if you take green tea, it has actions which are helpful for a hot, dry constitution. So that's the context of it. So um, the uh, actions that I'm looking for are an anti-inflammatory option. That makes sense. Bitters. Um, bitters line the tongue. And the more bitters you take, the less um, sugar sweet receptors you will have because they interplay. It's actually which ones you use that create the demand for the, the food sensation receptor. Um, so you can change from a sweet to a bitter. Um, and uh, they, they have a very calming effect on the autonomic nervous system all the way through to the digestive tract. Um, this works along the lines of the polyvagal vagal theory, which is a theory, but I find it explains an awful lot and works very well for my patients. Um, we want herbs that will promote healthy digestion. We want herbs that are renowned over the centuries for anti-allergy benefits. Um, we want to restore the mucous membranes. One of the reasons for doing this at this time of the year, before we get to the, gen the, the June flood of um, antihistamines um, and uh, hay fever, is that um, if we restore the mucous membrane um, optimum nutrition and function, for the next four or five weeks, you will um, actually have less of these allergic cascades because your barriers in lining your, your digestion and all the rest of it will be um, in better shape. So there'll be less, there'll be a higher threshold for them for triggering the immune system. So, and the herbs that I have in here, I don't mind if you get these ones, whether you grow them in the garden, whether you put them in your teapot from your own resources, um, get them individually, I really don't mind. But in a, in a short term um, uh, uh, kind of tutorial like this, it's just the most convenient way that I've done them for convenience for the staff because um, they can't be making up individual bottles for everybody who comes in. And that's how it all originated. So there's two main ways of doing that. One is there's a, a, a series of tea sachets, and one of them is called react because um, these are reactions to allergens. And they, in each packet, there is 14 tea sachets. Each of these tea, tea sachets has three teaspoons, which is one day's supply. And you put them either in your tall sippy cup um, or a flask or a teapot. You can mix them with a pint of water, a liter of water, um, a, a, a big tumbler of water, um, you, and then you take a third three times a day. You can keep them at room temperature and add boiling water to make a mug full. You can make them in a very small amount, pour out a bit, add boiling water to dilute it to make it a regular cup, cup of tea. Um, and what's in this, is and then you just throw away the tea. But you you have to do the work yourself and if, if i'm asking people to do this for four to five months over the summer i just find the compliance with this makes it well worth recommending i actually pay somebody to come in and make these tea bags for you um so there is an extra cost involved to cover that um that that work um so what's in these is plantago leaf and marigold Um, so going back to, we keep in mind our list of, of actions that we want to um, uh, keep in mind. Now, this React tea, I, I have designed, nature has designed these to boost, boost the um, uh, mucous membrane barriers um, and restore and be, um, keep, keep everything in, in good shape so that you're in the best place possible to resist um, allergens. So plantago is digestive, cooling, um, a, a demulcent. It's a moistening um, agent for the, the stomach and the mucous membranes. So it's a restorative and a nutritive for the mucous membranes. Chamomile is a nervine and anti-allergy. Elderflower is restoring mucous membranes. It also has a relaxing effect on the muscles. Nettle leaf restores um, histamine in the blood. When you flood with um, histamine release, it leaves your blood very deficient in histamine. It took me a long time to realize this because there, it, it is a, a histamine um, 
rich um, effect. And um, for me, I thought, how can that be if it, it, it's a different supply of histamine than leftover foods, um, which is a putrefaction thing. Um, but it wasn't until I read about the histamine depletion in the blood that I thought, all right, now that makes sense. Because if you're in the height of the hay fever season in particular, then you want to constantly replenish that. So that it's because it's, it's, it stabilizes. Um, it, it, it's part of a stable immune system. Um, and the last one is marigold, which is anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and very good for lymph drainage. Um, so I, I did say that stress, um, if you look at the whole field, which is emerging of psychoneuroimmunal medicine, we are coming closer. That's the closest that the um, regular medical system has to in coming to how to describe the terrain. So the, the further we actually go down all of these biochemistry metabolic s systems, the more we realize how connected they are. And if there's one thing that herbal medicine um, encourages, it's connections um, and using them as a blend of actions uh, really improves that. Um, so that's the React tea. So how do you use the tea in the tincture? I would say to people who have allergies, whether it's asthma, eczema, that the React tea is a less expensive way of keeping the stabilizers stable and optimally nourished. And then the allertone is for, for when the allergy is manifesting as, uh, as, as problems, you know, whether it's urticaria or um, hay fever or asthma, or if it's, if it's flaring up because you're stressed, not eating well, there's always a reason, you know, the body never lies, um, is a book by Gabor Mate. And it's along those lines that our symptoms are actually expressing where the balance is, has been, has lost its thread in, in the body. So our symptoms are very valuable, but we have to treat them with honor. Um, it, it, it's, it's a slightly esoteric way of saying that we need to look after ourselves, but it's very practical. Anybody who knows me knows I'm very practical. So in the Allerton, um, we have nettle, uh, maritime pine, chamomile, dandelion root, cornflower, mallow, elderflower, and eyebright. Okay. Now, anybody who knows about herbs reads these and they kind of go, oh, wow, that's, that'll do the job. Okay. But I'll go through why it'll do the job. Um, nettle, as we know, is uh, anti-allergy. Um, it actually interacts with key receptors and enzymes in allergic rhinitis, and there is a study to show that, but we, it's, it's, it's empirical knowledge um, that uh, nettles are very good for stabilizing allergic conditions um, and, and treating the depletion of active flare-ups. Um, so there's no excuse for us. Our nettles have just come up. Um, the tips are nice and soft and can be used as a vegetable and we can put them in our teapot and people go, how do you do that? You go out with a glove, you snip off the top, you go home, you put it in your teapot, you pour boiling water on top of it and you drink it. It's actually very pleasant. Okay. Um, uh, so if it, the, I do have an um, allergy PowerPoint slideshow. And if any of you would like the references for some of these descriptions, uh, you're more than welcome to email us, support at drclareapothecary.net. I hope you heard that. Support at drclare.net. Um, and we'll uh, send, you, um, uh, some, send you the slideshow. So the maritime pine um, is airway inflammatory. Uh, airway anti-inflammatory, and that has been shown in research um, on uh, egg, egg allergies, um, and it's antioxidant. It's not, it's not, it does have vitamin C, but it's more that it prevents the breakdown and aids regeneration of vitamin C and vitamin E in the body. So it's a protector of these vitamins, and these vitamins are very good at stabilizing the immune system and stabilizing cell walls. Um, uh, I finish these first and then I'll do a little demonstration. So the next herb is chamomile, um, rich in polyphe polyphenols and aromatic um, essential oils. It's a digestive and nervine um, and anti-allergy. 
Um, the dandelion um, is a bitter herb. It helps clear toxins. Um, it's liver cooling. Um, traditional, uh, used, traditionally used to, to, as an alterative to clear an overburdened system as a cleansing herb. Um, and it's very good for people with a hot constitution. Um, uh, and you probably all recognize people with a hot constitution just by describing them, um, uh, just by that description. The next herb is mallow. And mallow has um, a lot of recognition for um, soothing oral and pharyng pharyngeal um, uh, inflammation and an associated dry cough. It's actually very good if anybody has COVID symptoms as well. Um, and it's rich in polysaccharides, which are very good for the immune system. And then we have cornflower, no, uh, eyebright before cornflower. Eyebright is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antimicrobial, antifungal, anti-cancer, and anti-catarrhal. So pick any one, or one of those. Traditionally, it's been used for the eyes. So I use an eye compress uh, where you make a, a eye tea, eyebright tea, and we can send you a bag of eyebright tea. We can... Um, Courier this stuff all over Ireland and dried herbs anywhere in the world. So eyebright, you make a tea, and then you use one of the you know the um, uh, makeup removers, the little pads. Dip it in the uh, warm tea. Um, please don't use boiling hot tea, and then put it over the eyes as eye pads. Very very nice. Um, and I've seen people with swollen swollen streaming eyes, so uncomfortable, um, and very nice um, with the um, eye bright. Uh, you could also use chamomile tea bags, but test on an area when you don't when you don't have symptoms. Test on the inside of your arm just to make sure that you're not one of the uh, one in several thousands that have an allergy to chamomile. I just wanted to add there because I'm finding it very hard to get the eye bright. The, the carbs is very low. So what are the herbs apart from the eye bright for the eyes? Yeah, chamomile and fennel. Um, are, are also very good. So chamomile tea bags, fennel tea bags, uh, test the chamomile. Um, the fennel, I've not known anybody be um, allergic to it, but they're also very refreshing. Um, corn flour is the pretty corn flour that you see, or you used to see in meadows, and you can get them as garden seeds, beautiful blue flour. And these are particularly traditionally used for um, inflammation around the eye. They're anti-inflammatory, again, rich in polysaccharides and polyphenols are classic of all of these herbs that are rich um, in support for the immune system. Um, and it seems to work by the complement um, activities, which is a whole enzyme system. It's, it's not an ego-boosting comp complement. <laughs> um, so that's the, they're, they're the two kind of main groups of herbs. It's slight overlap. It's the React tea, and the anatol blend and i've gone through all the different herbs um, and if, please please do your own homework look what's in your garden um, in your hedgerows learn how to forage these herbs i'm all in favor of that make your own tinctures make your own bams make make everything and um, i would say um, that's very suitable for mild to moderate if you have moderate to severe or, or even just moderate um, please come and see us. We can now do Zoom calls and, um, and look after you because it usually takes a much more comprehensive system um, uh, and, and careful attention to nutrition um, if, if somebody has severe allergies. Okay, so, um, but even if you have severe allergies and you don't want to do that, using these herbs will, will help, but you might not get to a threshold where it's recognizable by you and you might be tempted to think, oh, those herbs are useless. And it's just that you need um, a more comprehensive support system um, of what you're doing every day. And you might need stronger herbs. There are stronger herbs that we clearly don't use over the counter, but would be available to us. I'm looking at 150 herbs over there and another 80 dried herbs. So there are herbs that would be, um, be stronger for people with severe symptoms. Um, and seeing a herbalist com comprises um, the, the history, drawing together the history, creating a narrative, um, reviewing nutrition um, in an overview. Um, if it's much more complicated, we work with Tara, who's also my technical assistant here tonight, um, and Michelle uh, also do nutrition um, 
appointments and, and they're specialists in the subject. Okay, back to more general, um, I said I would do, oh yes, because um, you, you can't write this, this is, this is a visual effect. If you, if you look at uh, usual cells like this, You have to push really hard to get a, a burst, right? Whereas the, the terrain of people with allergies are that the, the systems of robustness have are, are not properly integrated. So that they're like this. <coughs> and eventually they're more vulnerable weaker and eventually there's a collapse um, and that's when you get an avalanche of symptoms for severe problems um, so I, I don't know if you can take anything from that but that's I work as a visual learner and that's something that um, I would take away with me air filters um, are they if you're particularly if particularly a, is a problem inhaling um, allergens and you might want to look into air filters. Like everything else, there's um, an individual effect. Some people swear by them, some of them don't. The official evidence is controversial. Um, there's some evidence to say that they're useful and then other people prove that they're not. And it always goes with the last piece of evidence, um, which is one of the limitations of evidence-based medicine. So, but if you are thinking of getting an air filter, find out what types of allergens um, that they particularly filter and whether that matches your profile. Um, make sure that the air purifier is ozone free if you have asthma, as some of, of these can aggravate asthma if they release um, uh, ozone. Some of them have a, a low um, intensity noise, which some people find um, too annoying to actually make it useful. You know, it might be useful as an air purifier, but they can't tolerate the noise. Um, and uh, ask if you can have the use of one for a trial period um, and your money will be replaced if you're not happy or whatever the arrangement is. And don't expect it to work forever without cleaning and repairing, replacing the filters. Um, and to make sure that you reduce... Overall, you if you suffer from allergies... Let me just see if I'm... Pretty really great. Um, overall, if you suffer from allergies, you want to make your environment as pollution free as possible. As I said to you, the 63% of allergists in response to a questionnaire with a good response rate um, thought that uh, climate change and environmental pollutants were aggravating the, their patients with allergies and increasing the, the, the number of people experiencing allergy, allergies. Um, so you want to reduce all of the allergens in your environment. You want to reduce the amount of strange stuff that your body is exposed to. So that means having a plant-rich diet, organic if possible. The, the, the background to this is shopping and chopping. No shortcuts. Um, and you're either eating stuff that's directly shopped and chopped or one step removed um, it, which is eggs dairy and meat chicken poultry fish so there, there's nothing between um, uh, what you put on your plate what goes back to what walked on two legs or four legs or came from it and the plants so the plants are the key they are the ones that transfer the sun's energy into energy which is accessible to us with a complement of vitamins and minerals. The organic is because, not because it tastes better, not because it's more expensive and, you know, the posh thing to do. It's more because of what's not in it if you have allergies. What's not in it is agrochemicals. You can't see them, you can't taste them, so they might taste the same. Um, if you're buying organic chicken, you can please eat the skin and make um, chicken broth from the carcass. So you're, you're actually ending up getting a lot of food, a lot of calories. Um, fat is not bad for good, good.
good fat from our organic chicken is not to be thrown away, in other words. And, and I have no fear of fat in the diet. It actually is helpful. In particular, I said about the courgette, cucumber. And, and you know, there's no, there's no need to guess why. If I was to say to you, which is more um, laden for an overburdened system, would it be a turnip or would it be a courgette? Or would it be a, a, a carrot or a cucumber? Okay, so the the turnip and carrot are much more dense, um, and the cucumber and courgette and celery, huge fan of celery. Um, so you and you, I do slow pot cookery twice a week, and that I don't spend a huge amount of time in the kitchen. Um, uh, the next important thing is the essential fatty acids, oily fish, nuts and seeds and avocado. And again, we can send you, if you haven't already got it from us, because it's a very strong recommendation for just a healthy life and good sleeping, um, oily fish, nuts and seeds and avocado. Um, and that can include um, or, um, smoked salmon or tinned salmon. Um, and pink is as good as red. You don't have to be rich for this. In fact, you save a fortune okay, um, by doing this. Right. Let's see, does anybody have any questions? Um, and if any of you want to nip away, off you go. No, any any questions, anybody? Um, oh, you are very quiet tonight. Um, so other than that, um, I think that's most of what I want to say. Um, and you've all been great. It's been... Um, an hour and 10 minutes. So I think that's loads of time to take up on a beautiful evening like this. Um, so, and for those of you who catch up later, um, I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, we'll say good night and goodbye and we'll head off and go for our walks ourselves. Won't we, Tara? Okay, bye. It's it's up in the top. Oh, okay.